Welcome back to The Controller Project, proudly part of Able Gamers Charity. Today, I've got a fun one for you. It's just a simple button. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's got some cool little tweaks and, and quirks to it that I think you'll enjoy. First, let me tell you uh, why we created this and what it solves, what problem it solves. A very common situation that we have in gaming with people who have spinal injuries or whatever is that they can move their arm but they don't have fine motor skills so we use a joystick like this and we mount a button here they can move their arm and they can rock their their wrist down onto this button this is the most common button it's made by logitech it's a very low force button it's it's relatively small but the problem that we've seen with a few people is that they hit it really too easily. It's too big, they bump it easily. It does not take much force to press it, which is good for many people, but for a few, it's just not ideal. So we had a client ask for a smaller button. We designed one that is itty bitty. I'll show you a size comparison in a moment, but this being this small means they can mount it more precisely where they need it here on this joystick or anywhere else. It's also a little bit harder to push than that Logitech one, which is not good for some people, but for some people it's required. I don't know if you can hear it next to the microphone. It's nice and clicky and it's nice and tiny. Like it, I can hide it under my finger almost. So I don't know, I've been calling this one the smasher myself because they just have to smash it with their wrist. Let's put this together. I'll show you the details and we'll see the final result. Since I am a 3D printing dork, uh, I made these overly complicated. They are print in place. So here's how they print, just like this, but there's a hinge in them so that they close like that. The first couple times may be a little stiff depending on your printer and the quality it prints at, but you just do this a few times and they loosen up and then you have a fully functional switch, no assembly necessary, it all just works. For the switches for these, I'm just using a standard little six millimeter momentary switch. They're tiny and there's just a itty bitty bit of prep you have to do. So they have four feet and you can see they're just on the two sides. What you're gonna do is bend those feet out flat like this and you're actually gonna cut off two of them. That's fine, it does not affect how they perform. It just gives you more space. You can just clip those off. So see, there's no feet on one side, there's only two feet on the other. And that way they fit down inside like this. And then you solder your wire to them and then your wire comes out this direction and I suggest some hot glue here for stress relief so that the wire moving around won't destroy them over time. Let me show you the completed product. So here's the final result. You can see it compared to the Logitech. It's a little bit thinner, much smaller footprint. Um, and you can see I just used a, a drop of hot glue here to help secure that uh, in place. You can see the construction of it there. That's it. Uh, I did find that the um, print settings are a little bit important. I will have a description of how to print this down below. Too fat and it doesn't want to work. Too thin and it falls apart. So I'll have settings, known working settings, in the description and on printables. Thanks so much for watching. As usual, the files uh, are going to be linked down below for free so you can make your own, uh, as well as a link to donate to Able Gamers. If you want to help, more people be able to game. Gaming is for everyone. Donate to Able Gamers. I'll see you on the next video.